First story. OP finds out her husband hired her friend to strip at his bachelor party four years after the fact. Four years ago, I got married to my husband after dating for six years, so ten years total now. My friend Rebecca has been stripping since she was 21. She stopped last year after getting married and is going to be a psalm when her baby is born. Since our children, we've been very close, and we're basically neighbors she lives at the bottom of the road we live on. Last week, one of my husband's friends visited at the same time as Rebecca. I had made plans to shop with her, but I forgot to cancel, and she showed up. After she left, my husband's friend commented that he couldn't believe we were still friends after the bachelor party. When I asked my husband what his friend meant, he refused to comment, and we got into a huge fight over it when he told me Rebecca had been the stripper at his bachelor party. I texted Rebecca in the moment that I don't want her around anymore, but she hasn't responded in a week. I feel betrayed by the both of them, but I know it was just her job. I miss Rebecca a lot, but I'm so hurt. I don't know what to do. Relevant comments. My biggest concern is the friend's comment. I would want to know what happened. If it were me, I would ask him her and his friends. The fact that she hasn't responded also makes me suspect there was more. This might get buried, but I'm a professional burlesque performer. At one point, a fellow dancer asked if I wanted to perform with her at a private holiday party, and when she told me the payout, I almost SHT myself. I was pretty new at this point and didn't even know I could make this amount of money from performing. But I found out it was for a business owned by a friend of my dad's, and I bailed immediately. There are some lines you just don't cross. Losing a friend is hard no matter what. But this person was not your friend when she crossed that boundary, and she wasn't your friend when she continued to hide it from you. You can miss her and mourn the relationship you thought you had, but this is not a loss. Good luck. I texted Rebecca in the moment that I don't want her around anymore, but she hasn't responded in a week. I mean you told her you didn't want anything further to do with her. It seems like the most respectful response to that would be silence, if you're going to reach out again. I think you need to get clear on exactly what you want here. An apology? An explanation? Or do you just want to vent how hurt you are? You can't count on getting the reaction you want from her. But if you can't actually see yourself ever trusting her enough again to repair the friendship regardless, then there's no real point. The bigger problem here is with your husband. Did you two talk about the bachelor party in advance? Would you have a problem with this if it hadn't been Rebecca? Or if he told you? What do you need from him to move forward? OP's reply. He told me there wouldn't be strippers. There were. I'm mostly hurt that it was Rebecca, and I wouldn't have reacted this way had he been truthful and hadn't been Rebecca. Now all I can think is that every time he sees her, he's attracted to her or sees her in a state of undress. Even as a dude, I find watching strippers really nasty. I don't know. It just feels weird to even do that. I do need to ask, and maybe this is a cultural thing. Was it really your husband that hired her? I mean, usually it's the best man's or best man's job to organize the bachelor party, isn't it? It sounds odd to me either way, and I'd be pissed too. OP's reply. Yes, he hired her and planned the entire thing. First update. In my last post, I found out that my husband had actually hired strippers for his bachelor party. Not only that, but he had gone out of his way to hire Rebecca a close friend, and they hid this for four years. Is it too soon to update? I confronted them both separately. And they both gave two very different stories. Rebecca says that my husband got drunk, groped her, and when she refused, he pushed her and started to yell at her. Apparently, my husband and his friends believe I shouldn't be friends with her because she leads them on. My husband says that they didn't sleep together, but Rebecca tried to initiate and perform oral while he was blacked out drunk. I'm staying with my parents because I don't know who to believe here or if I should even believe either of them. All I've done is argue with my husband since the confession. I'm left more confused than ever, and honestly, I just want to say that for both of them. But if my husband's story is true, then he's totally innocent. But what if Rebecca is telling the truth? What if neither of them are? I'm sick of them both. I haven't stopped crying since arriving at my mother, to be honest. And I don't think I can. Why would he hide this for four years? Why would she? If they both believe they're fully innocent victims here? My husband is a mean drunk, but he's always so soft-spoken. And I don't know if he can do those things Rebecca claimed. But I don't know how he reacts around his friends. But I've known him longer than Rebecca too. But I'm all for believing women. I feel like by agreeing with my husband, I'm denying Rebecca's story or side. Relevant comments. But if my husband's story is true, then he's totally innocent. I'd think hiring a stripper, you know personally for your bachelor party, makes him far from innocent, no matter what events transpire. Plus, who hires their own strippers? That's the best man's job. 
another user replies. Yeah, he sought out this Rebecca specifically, knowing she was a close friend of yours. That's a whole different level of intent when looking at bachelor party entertainment options, coupled with the statement that he's a mean drunk. Why are you even contemplating staying with him? I'd be getting some therapy and a divorce attorney so I could move on in a healthy manner. A former stripper is here. There's absolutely no way that a dancer would waste their work time sucking someone's flaccid pee, pee while they were blacked out. None. She went to work and did not commit a say. My feeling says there was a type of SX, but both of them are lying to you about it. I drop all of these people. OP, I hope this isn't intrusive, and you obviously don't have to answer. But is it okay if I ask what you mean by your husband being mean drunk and being controlling? I'm just a little concerned, given a few things you've mentioned, coupled with Rebecca's statement that he assaulted her. OP's reply. He can get a bit degrading nothing violent, just verbally. Third and final update. This will be the last update. I'd like to say thanks to everyone who commented. I realize I don't care anymore. I have done nothing but think about my husband throughout our marriage. My entire life has revolved around him. All my thoughts revolved around him, and I've finally realized. I've been the only one keeping this marriage going. I've been relying on him and forgiving him for such a lot of bullshit because I don't have anyone else. I gave him everything, and that's not happening anymore. Maybe finding out about Rebecca just sped things up. Maybe I relied too heavily on my husband. I told him this morning that it's over. He has yet to stop texting me, begging for a chance. I texted Rebecca and told her I no longer wanted her in my life either. Both have confessed to sleeping together and continuing to do so. My husband, out of anger, insulted me, and maybe Rebecca wanted a last F you. Rebecca's baby is my husband, so to say F you back. I messaged her partner to let him know. I'm devastated obviously. But now we have to make plans about what's happening with the house and custody. And I can't afford to continue crying about it. Rebecca's partner let me know at 6pm that she had moved. He helped her move all of her stuff into my husband's house. It's all happened so fast. And I can't believe I was so oblivious to it. Maybe I wanted to be. Once again, thanks for all the comments and messages. It's really made me open my eyes. It's all happened so fast that I don't have time to process it all. It looks like they wanted me to find out before she gave birth a nice, happy family now. Relevant comments. I find it extremely disturbing how both of them used sexual assault to hide their mistakes. It tells you a lot about who they are as a person. I say better late than never, and do thank your ex's friends who kind of helped you unknowingly. I personally think it was eating him from inside, and he nudged you in that direction so that he would still be a friend and not feel guilty about hiding this from you. Congratulations on taking this step. It's going to be really hard. But if you are strong enough to step out of this mess, you are strong enough to move forward too. Lots of well wishes to you. No girl you fight. If your name is on the deed, make him sell that B. And you get half of that money. Get a lawyer. Heck, talk to all the good ones. He has to find some cheap ones. If you need to talk, surviving infidelity helps. Trust me. With all that, he doesn't have a leg to stand on. And in the divorce, he has it written that he will pay for the divorce and your lawyer. Second story. OP cut off her entitled mill after she told OP's six-year-old daughter. I hope your mother died in the hospital. I was in a car crash. I had to be cut out of the car. I wasn't seriously injured though, thankfully, but the other person unfortunately wasn't doing too well. From what I saw before, I was taken away to the hospital. I was told to stay in the hospital overnight to see if I suffered from a concussion. I called my husband and told him what happened. My mill got the incidents mixed up when he dropped off our daughters, six and eleven, to my mill while he rushed to see me. Next morning, my husband brought our daughters to come get, while I was waiting to be discharged. Upon seeing me, my six-year-old busted into tears and said, I don't want you to die. I comforted her and said I'm not dying, and I was very lucky. She then said that Granny said she hoped I died, so that they and my husband could come live with her. Me and my husband were shocked, and my twelve-year-old confirmed she heard her say that. My husband said he was going to call Mill. When he came back into the room, he looked furious. But she didn't say anything until after we got home, and he said Mill denied it. But after he kept pushing, she ended up admitting it. But she said she didn't mean it. I thought we were close. But I guess not. I am incredibly hurt, she would want that, and said I wanted me and the girls to go out of contact with Mill. I told him he could have a relationship with her. But I don't want me and the girls to have one with her. My husband said he supports me. He then called Mill and told her what I said. She didn't take it too well. She came to our house crying and saying it was a misunderstanding, that she didn't mean it, and that we were taking it the wrong way. My husband asked, what did you mean then? 
She just got hysterical and started crying and saying she always wanted daughters. But my husband was the only child due to her, not being able to have any after him. And that the girls are more like her daughters than granddaughters. And she wasn't thinking properly when she said that to our six-year-old. She got so worked up that my husband had to take her home. When he got back, he said he didn't know she felt like that. And asked if I still wanted to cut her off. I said yes. He said okay and didn't argue. But it's been a week now. And he is still very quiet and hasn't said much about what happened. And now I'm starting to feel guilty and wondering if I did take it the wrong way by being Ada. Comments. Laquilla. She traumatized your child. It was horrifying for your daughter to hear that. Bad enough, her mom was in the hospital after a car accident. As a young child, she likely had a whole lot of frightening scenarios going through her mind, unable to properly process them. Your daughter needed assurance and positivity. Not what that disgusting Harridan said. Mill did mean it. You don't blurt something like that out, either out of misunderstanding or as a joke. That whole hysterical outburst she put on in front of you. That was bullshit. Manipulative bullshit. Because she got caught. And it seems to have worked on your husband because she's trained brainwashed him that way. Stand your ground. She needs, at the very least, a good, long time out. Do not let your husband or anyone sweep this under the rug. Because doing that would make everyone think it's perfectly okay for Mill to hope you died and for your daughters to lose their mom. That's sickening. I'd make that time out last at least six months. Heck, make it for the rest of this year. So she loses out on the big holidays at the very least. What a vile effing cow, NTA. Okay perception 1A131. I agree with all of this. Mill's tears are manipulative. It's disgusting that she wishes you were dead. But it's unforgivable that she told a child that. I would go to NC for years. Recording kindly 3D74. I'm baffled that she sees her grandkids more like her own children and that she resents OP for having daughters. Promoted my mother-in-law to say I hope she's dead too. Judgment. NTA. Update. Two days later. Well you guys were right. I decided to talk to my husband and asked if he's upset that I decided that me and the girls go no contact with Mill. He said he wasn't. He said he always knew Mill wanted a daughter instead of him. And it brought back all the bad memories of rejection and hurt he felt growing up with her as a kid. I suggested therapy, and he's willing to go. We are also going to get therapy for our six-year-old, as she now gets anxious if I'm not within her sight. My husband agreed that going to NC with Mill was the best thing for our family. Our daughter's birthday is coming up, and we have yet to tell Mill she is no longer invited. I'm not looking forward to that. But that's the update. Thanks to everyone for the lovely comments and support. I appreciate it. Comments. Denevelle. Suggestion. Maybe take your daughter out of town for her birthday to a nearby attraction, zoo, play, or something special on her birthday instead of a party, or a party on a later date with her little friends instead of family. If you're not there, Mill can throw all the witch fits she wants, and nobody will be there to see her, so there's no party for her to ruin. Hopefully learning not. She wanted you dead, so treat her as if you were. NTA. Update 3. One day later. I didn't think I would be posting here again, and I thought my last date would be my last. But here we are. Mill has been arrested. My husband and cousin found my post and knew it was me, and she reported it straight to Mill. Yeah, we know it was you who told her, Christina. Margaret told us all about it when she came over and screamed that we couldn't keep her daughters from her. She didn't even hesitate to drop your name and throw you under the bus. So much for loyalty, huh? You are not welcome at home anymore, and you are officially removed from Sam's birthday list and our lives. How about you show the whole family this post? so they can see how two-faced you are, to the Reddit community. Sorry about that. But Mill has been arrested. She came to our house screaming that we couldn't keep her daughters from her. The husband tried to calm her down and get her to leave. She wouldn't, and she attacked him. My husband had to restrain her, and I called the police. She fought them, but it got her nowhere except the back of their car. The woman is truly insane. My husband talked to the police because I had to calm down my daughters, because they witnessed the whole thing. My six-year-old was hysterical about Granny being taken away. This is all just a big mess. Comments. Wulipiot. My daughters? What the actual FCK? A woman needs to be committed. Also, FCK you, Christina. Dot Shunlum 5. Make sure you press charges and file a restraining order. If she is actually mentally ill, that's for her lawyer to handle to get her help. The restraining order is needed. Magdalish. Yes, part of her case or sentence will take all aspects of her health into consideration best. Third story. My dad's girlfriend is trying to get rid of me. My mom passed away five years ago, and I think of her every day. 
My dad went through a really bad depression, and I had to basically take care of myself. During the Christmas holidays, my dad told me that he had been seeing someone for a while. I noticed that he was happier, and I guess I was happy for him. I didn't want him to be lonely forever, but I did feel like my mom was being erased completely. He never wanted to talk about her, and he got rid of all pictures with her in them. He said that his girlfriend would be spending Christmas with us and then moving in. I wasn't happy at all. I don't even know her, but I didn't say anything. I met her on Christmas, and usually my dad and I put the star on the tree that day. We would put the star on the tree and watch the Grinch. It's our tradition, and we kept it even when we were grieving my mom. It's the only tradition from when she was with us that we actually kept. When his girlfriend came over, he put the star on with her while I was in the bathroom. Also, we didn't watch the Grinch because she hates it. I know I sound spoiled and childish, but I was so angry. We've been doing this my whole life, and she just came in and destroyed it. The whole night, she didn't even bother getting to know me at all. She was all over my dad and pretty much ignored me. I told my dad about how upset I was about our tradition, and he said I should grow up and that things change. I didn't like her because she gave me a bad feeling, so I never got close to her. She complained to my dad about it, and he got mad at me for not making her feel welcomed. I felt bad because she makes my dad really happy, so I tried being more friendly with her. In front of my dad, she was nice to me, but when we were alone, she ignored me or spoke to me with attitude. She even told me that I was a brat and that I made my dad's life harder. I told him, but he didn't believe me and yelled at me for trying to sabotage his relationship. He said that I wanted him to die alone and be sad, and that I was selfish. I was so shocked because none of it is true. My dad basically treated me like I wasn't there at all after that. I felt like I did when my mom died, all alone. I stayed up really late one night because I just couldn't sleep and wanted to sneak in a midnight snack. The girlfriend was in the kitchen on FaceTime, so I decided to be nosy and listen. She was talking about my dad and how much she loved him. Then she said that he had this dumb daughter, and she wondered if it was too late for adoption. She and her friend laughed at that. She said that I was a little BTCH, and she hated me. Her friend then said something about boarding school or military school, but I left, so I didn't hear the rest. I was so exhausted from all the crying I did, so I actually slept. I didn't tell my dad, and I don't even know if I should since he probably won't believe me. I really miss my mom. I kind of want to go live with my grandparents' mom's parents now, but I don't want my dad to think that I'm leaving him. What do I do? Can I even do anything? How do I get my dad to listen to me? Would I be wrong for leaving? Update. Hi. Since my last post, I have spoken to my grandparents and told them everything. I asked if I could stay with them if I wanted to, and they agreed. I then spoke to my dad again and tried to tell him how I felt and what I had heard. I didn't want to film or record because I knew that he would be mad at that and wouldn't listen. He didn't believe me again and thought that I was jealous of having to share him with someone else. I got upset and told him that I was leaving so he could live happily ever after without the burden of having me around. He looked shocked but didn't say anything. I had already packed my bags and brought some things to my grandparents' house. My dad didn't speak to me for the rest of the day. My grandfather picked me up and I've been there since. I haven't gone home and I haven't heard from my dad. My grandparents told me that they would handle my dad, and that I shouldn't have to be the one doing it. I'm upset that my dad hasn't called or texted me once to see if I'm okay. At the same time, I'm feeling so much better being with my grandparents. My grandmother is probably the sweetest person ever, and my grandfather is a little rough around the edges, but he's really a softy. Update. My dad came to visit me at my grandparents' place to talk to me. He brought his girlfriend with him. He said, My girlfriend and I have been talking and we decided that it's best that you stay here. My dad said that I can come clean out my room completely, and he'll help. He also said that after I get my things, we should also take a break from each other and reevaluate things in a few months, or however long it takes. His girlfriend then said something about how she'd take care of my dad for me. In a few days, I'll be going over with my grandparents to get my stuff. We'll also be getting the important papers that some of you have mentioned. It doesn't look like I'll be going home anytime soon. I have a new home now, I guess. TBH. I have been feeling pretty bad about some of the comments. Specifically, the one saying that since I probably remind him of my mom, that's why he's like that with me. He got rid of everything of my mom's, and I was the last piece of my mom, so it makes sense he doesn't want me anymore. I really wish she was still here. I think he wants to start over, and I wasn't part of that plan, so I guess that's it. Thank you for all the kind comments. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, 
hit the like button, and share it with your friends.